This motherboard right here, the Pro A620M-E from MSI is the cheapest motherboard you can currently get on the AM5 socket, where it's been discounted from $85 down to $75 at the moment. However, before you go and buy this motherboard, there are some very concerning things about it and today we will take that trip to Good Avenue, hopefully by the end of this video, but we're gonna take a detour via Bad Street before we get there. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in description below. So this motherboard right here, the professional from MSI, I decided to kickstart the testing here with the Ryzen 9 7950X. And here is where things straight away from the get-go was an absolutely horrible experience. And it actually didn't come in the form of testing so much. It came in the form of compatibility when we first tried to boot this motherboard up. In fact, I could not get my G-Skill memory, DDR5 memory, to work at all, even with one stick in either slot of memory. It just wouldn't boot. And then eventually I tried some Corsair DDR5 memory. The system booted up and we could do some testing. But that first part does concern me because if you buy a motherboard, a CPU and DDR5 memory, and the system just straight out doesn't work, and it this is the most important part, it doesn't have BIOS flashback, you can be essentially sitting on hardware that's just not going to work until you either take it to a store and get them to flash the BIOS for you with different memory or get a friend to help you, but it can cause a lot of frustration when there's memory compatibility issues. And in this case, looking through MSI's BIOS update list, they've released quite a number of BIOS updates for this motherboard and a few of those do correct memory compatibility. So this definitely just wasn't an isolated incident here at the Tech Yes studio. However, after we fixed that, we did do some tests first off with the default BIOS that came with the board and this was throttling the CPU at a hard 90 watts. In other words, it was not running at any of the higher specs over 90 watts for any of the CPUs that they've listed on their website. And this concerns me because it is very misleading to do this as Hardware Unboxed have pointed out in the past when they've looked at a few cheaper ASRock motherboards where the company would list higher wattage requirements and CPUs than was actually supported. And here MSI is doing that with this A620M Pro motherboard, where they're saying all the CPUs will work. But then at the top of the website, they've listed an interesting clause here, which says, note, all listed CPUs work as intended, but in order to protect the motherboard's power circuit, CPU performance may be lowered depending on CPU model, temperature, and use case. Well, if we're looking at the 7950X, for example, it says CPU speed 4.5 gigahertz and 170 watts. But when we go into Windows and we test this out on two different BIOS versions, the first and the last, we're seeing that the performance of the CPU is going down to 3.6 gigahertz roughly, when this CPU can easily go to five gigahertz. So this makes it so that you are losing a lot of performance. And in fact, it wasn't even in relation to the scale of the core clocks. And when we look at this performance, or should I say, lack of performance when you're running this configuration, it throttles the performance down significantly where this is definitely not going to be as intended like is stated on MSI's website. In fact, you're gonna be losing a lot of performance and you're probably gonna be pulling your hair out if you decide to go with a combination like this. Now here's where things do get worse for this motherboard and that is when we looked at the VRM temperatures even at this 90 watt limit. Here is where without downdraft airflow, we had the VRM going to 90 degrees at this 90 watt setting. And then if we put in say a Ryzen 7 7700X, we're still throttled to 90 watts and the top down cooler, this then goes to drop the VRM temperatures 
into the mid 70 degree region, which is absolutely fine. But that 90 degrees at 90 watts does concern me because it shows that the VRM implementation as a whole is very inefficient and it's causing a lot of leakage on heat, which means that it's a very cheap solution. And after seeing those results, you can understand why MSI would want to throttle this board so heavily. But what confuses me here is why is MSI misleading its customers and not just stating the facts straight up with this motherboard, where if we look at the 7950X, the Ryzen 9 on AMD's website, they say it has a default TDP of 170 watts, which means that any motherboard that runs this CPU, it should either state that it runs it at a lower wattage, or of course, it can run at 170 watts. But the CPU also does have a higher power limit of around 230 watts. So if we were to use Intel's PL1 and PL2, which is power limit one, power limit two, it'd be 170 watts and 230 watts. This motherboard runs neither of those and it does so with a terrible drop in performance, unfortunately, with VRM temperatures that have to be used, in my opinion, with a top-down draft cooler because the VRM itself is quite inefficient. Now, that being said, this motherboard will work absolutely fine with a Ryzen 5 7500F or one of my favorites, the Ryzen 7 7700, which do have default configurations of 65 watts TDP. So if you're going with either of those two CPUs, you should be okay, except keep in mind, just like we said earlier in the video, you may have memory compatibility issues which cause your system just to not boot at all. So it seems like MSI have really dropped the ball on this budget motherboard right here. But to make things worse, when I went into the website to look for this information, I eventually did get to that compatibility section that I showed you about. But before that, I was just getting blanket statements of Ryzen 7000 desktop processors and the compatibility would work absolutely fine across the board. So what I'd like to see is MSI fix these corrections as Hardware Unboxed had pointed out in the past with mainly ASRock motherboards. They've shown that ASRock in the past have done this same sort of practice. And I think I agree with them. It's unacceptable when companies do this. And I'm just surprised to see MSI doing this with a budget entry level A620ME, especially since it's the best priced A620 motherboard I can find out there and actually the best priced AM5 motherboard. So I think a lot of people are going to be buying this and perhaps some of them will be buying it with the Ryzen 5 7600X, for example, which has a 105 watt TDP limit, they're gonna be getting this and they'd be coming into some issues, especially if they don't get a top-down draft cooler. They could be having a very hot VRM, but at the same time having a CPU that doesn't give them the performance that they're expecting. Though some other nuances that I came into with this motherboard besides the system not booting correctly on the default BIOS that it's shipped with, I also had problems updating the BIOS where I thought first my system wasn't working properly even with the Corsair memory, but lo and behold, it just took so long to just get into the M flash utility, which is separated from the BIOS itself. So in other words, you get into the BIOS, you wanna flash the BIOS, you then gotta go into this mode and then it just restarts the computer and takes a long time before it can get a signal. And also another issue I came into was with capture cards for some reason with this motherboard, it decided to not work properly on that initial BIOS, meaning that if you wanna get your capture card to work properly, you're probably going to have to flash the BIOS anyhow. Also printed on the box here, they've got Lightning Gen 4 M.2 SSD support. And the problem is there is no heatsink included for your M.2. Now, basically do not run or attempt to run a Gen 4 SSD without a heatsink. You are going to potentially damage the drive permanently. Also on their website, when it comes to the marketing, they make a big statement like heatsink included, yet it's only for the chipset hub. And the problem here is, is that you have to have that. That's an AMD prerequisite for any of their AM5 motherboards that they produce. So MSI, if you're gonna use this whole heatsink marketing, at least put a heatsink on the VRM and please don't call it a pro motherboard because 
There's nothing professional about this board. Also, the last thing in relation to this motherboard is the memory speeds where they say on the box it has 6400 megahertz compatibility. I only got it up to 6200 megahertz. And then on the website, they say 6000 megahertz. So which one is it MSI? I feel like you're making a lot of mistakes, especially with this board in particular. And it just shows when things are different on the box as opposed to the website in relation to the information. But regardless, 6200 megahertz DDR5 memory did work absolutely fine with this board as it does work with some other A620s that we've tested out here. So, and then the final thing is $75 and it should work fine with the Ryzen 5 7500F. I've actually got one coming in the mail because you can get these for around $160, six cores, 12 threads, and it will give you some impressive performance considering that iGPU is disabled on that CPU by default. And me personally, when I, if I'm using Ryzen 7000, I always disable that iGPU anyway. So you're basically getting a lot of CPU for the money from AMD's latest and greatest. So that CPU should work fine with this board though. When it comes in, I will actually segue this into the question of the day because it's pretty important. And that is from Spicy Noodles 307 They asked, Brian, I hope you see my comment what about the B650M-HDV slash M.2? It's on Amazon for 125 bucks. Can you make a video about it? Hub said it's good, but I wanna know your opinion too. So we will check this motherboard out from ASRock, their B650 for 125 bucks. We'll also check out a few other cheap budget A620 and B650 options. So if you want us to check them out, put them in the comment section below and I'll get on to doing a full roundup of the best, cheapest AM5 motherboard options for you guys. Because we recently checked out the Pro RS, the A620 Wi-Fi, and that was really impressive across all fronts. In fact, it could handle a 7950X easily, and it did so with really good VRM temperatures, even without top-down cooling. So that board, actually would be my choice after testing the budget boards. But of course, I'm gonna take a look at some other options for you guys, and we'll do a full roundup with say Ryzen 5, 7500F, and then maybe the 7950X, just to give you guys some options out there, because I feel like something like this could go well with a cookie cutter Ryzen 5, 7500F build. But the problem there is that compatibility. That one really puts me off, because if I'm making a blanket recommendation for a motherboard and people get it in and it doesn't work, there is nothing more frustrating than that when it comes to PC building, especially if it's your first PC build. So that was actually a bit concerning to see that. Anyhow, guys, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comments too, what do you think about this practice with motherboard companies listing things on their websites that are misleading? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that aside, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.